Hello and welcome to this video. So we're set up with our API key, our account ID, and we're ready to get cracking. I'm on the developer.oanda.com website uh, under the REST version 2 here. And this is the API documentation for the version 2 of the REST API with Oanda. I want to spend a little bit of time in this video understanding what's actually meant by REST API. So we're going to have our application that we're going to write. And our application is going to request information from Oanda's server. And it's going to do it using an HTTP request and using their API. When we make this request, it'll hit the server. The server hopefully will understand it and it will send us a response. And there are two main parts to every REST API request. One is the actual URL, which you can see here, mydata.com forward slash users. And the other one is the verb. So here we have two verbs, get and post. And you'll see here that the request URL is actually exactly the same. The server is set up to understand what kind of request you're making denoted by the verb. So if you send a get request to forward slash users, the server will understand you want a list of users. If you send a post request, the server will be set up to understand that you want to create a new user. And this is basically in a nutshell how REST APIs work. The server response will be in what's known as JSON format. JSON is JavaScript object notation. So a way of describing information or objects inside programs using text. And it's pretty much the de facto standard for transferring information via web-based APIs. So if we look at this pretend response here we've got from this user's GET request, we can see that we have what's known as a list because we've got the square brackets and the curly braces here denote what are known as objects. And inside those objects, we've got some kind of information. So if we break up our list, we can see that we've got one and two distinct objects. And the first object, we have some information. One is we have a name, which is Bert and age 24. And in the second object, we have a name, Rosie, age 95. And we also have some pets, which is a list of pets. You can see by the square brackets here, it's another list, pig, duck, and a cat. When you first see this, it can be a little bit confusing. And the way I like to visualize it is, is that each, each object is a box and that box has a set of doors and behind each door is some information. And what you need is the key to open that door to get the information. So if you take the box that is this object and then you use the key name, the information you'll get back is rosy. If you use the key age, the information you'll get back is 95. And if you use the key pets, then you'll get the list of pets back as the information. And the important thing to understand is that all these objects are based on a key and a value. And we'll be using this concept of key value throughout the course because Oanda's API will give us JSON in return and all of the information they give us will be based around keys and values. Now we're going to need to be able to test the Oanda API and understand the responses outside the Python code. To do that, we're going to use an application called Postman. I'd like you to download it from this site and you're going to need to sign up using the orange button on the top right hand side and make an account for this as well. Once you've downloaded it, you should be able to start up the Postman app and see something like this. And what I'm going to do is just click this plus to make a new tab. And you can see that this has opened a space. It says untitled request. Here we've got an HTTP verb. And here we've got a URL that we can paste in to make an API request. And the response will come back down in this response area at the bottom of the screen here. Now we're going to make a practice request just to see how all this works. There's a website online called uh, jsonplaceholder.tipicode.com and as it says here, it's a free to use fake online REST API for testing and prototyping. And we're just going to use this to finish off the video, you making a request using Postman. So if I scroll down a bit, we can see they've got some resources here. And one of them is called forward slash users, which gives us 10 users. If I click on that, copy the URL and back in Postman, paste in the URL and hit send. I've sent using the get verb to this user's URL a request and it's returned to me a list, which is denoted by the square brackets here, and then 10 objects. And each object represents a user, just as we saw a minute or two ago. So we have a key ID of one, the name key, we have the email key, the address key, which gives us another object in there. And that has a street, a suite, a city, a geo, which is another object which has latitude and longitude, etc., etc. And this is exactly how the Oenda API is going to work as well. We're going to make GET requests to different URLs, say instruments or trades or something like this, and it'll give us back the information we've requested. Now, interestingly, if we change this verb to POST and SEND, we get back an entirely different response. So what's happened there? Well, this is what I explained earlier. Even though the URL is exactly the same, the server is set up to do different things depending on the verb. Now, usually when you send POST to a REST API, the assumption is that you want to create something new. So in this case, create a new user. 
And usually the response that you get is the ID of the new user that you created. Now this is a fake API, so it sent us back a fake ID, which would be the normal response we might want to practice with when using an API. We could choose another verb, let's say delete, and send that to users and send. And now it sent us back just an empty object because there's nothing there. If the delete hadn't worked, it might send us an error or something like this. So with the Ando API, we're going to be sticking, I think, pretty much to the get and the post verbs only. OK, then that's it then for this video. The next video will carry on with Postman, but we'll start looking at making our actual own requests to the Oanda API. So thanks very much for watching. Comments and questions are welcome as always below the video and see you in the next one.